Population Control. This is the third part in a multi-part series examining Rescue Mission, Planet Earth, the children's edition of Agenda 21. The idea that the world is overpopulated and something must be done about it is a concept that the United Nations constantly propagates. In the official Agenda 21 document, it is suggested that the Earth has a certain limit to the number of people that can live on this planet or a carrying capacity. It is also strongly suggested that the large number of humans currently living on the earth are destroying the planet and recommends vague solutions to fix the problem. The notion that countries have a national population carrying capacity is proliferated in Rescue Mission as well, which in this book is defined in child-friendly terms as, quote, how many people their countries can hold without bursting, end quote. In my original analysis of the official Agenda 21 document, I took note of the peculiar grammar used in terms of overpopulation and the UN's apparent solution of abortion. I say apparent solution because the term abortion, for reasons I did not understand at the time, is never used, though it is obviously suggested. After reading Rescue Mission, the reason for this omission becomes clear. Sridath Ramfall of the Commission on Global Governance explains on page 32 of Rescue Mission why, in his opinion, Agenda 21, Chapter 5 on Population is very weak. Quote, It happened because very powerful lobbies did not allow the summit to talk about the population. There was a coming together of views of the Vatican with the anti-abortion lobby in the U.S. and some other developed countries who did not want to talk about the other side of population, which is consumption. End quote. Using this passage, it is obvious to deduce that the United Nations, according to Ramfall, wanted to include more about abortion in terms of population reduction in Agenda 21, but was unable to due to resistance from certain lobby groups. To convey the myth of overpopulation, statistics are used in a blatant propagandist fashion. Page 32 of Rescue Mission opens up with the statement, quote, Did you know that within the time it takes to draw one breath, 500 kids are born? End quote. This figure sounds dramatic if you leave out the valuable piece of information that puts it into perspective, which is the amount of people that die in the time that it takes you to draw one breath. This opening statement of page 32 concludes with, quote, We're finding it quite a challenge to feed, house, and clothe five billion. End quote. I find the term we in this sentence to be quite odd. It is not clear who the author of this opening statement is, but whoever it is, apparently, feels as if they are the ones responsible for feeding, providing housing, and clothing for the whole world. This implied sense of authority is one of the most dangerous aspects, in my opinion, of the United Nations, and of all collectivist organizations. In an effort to control population, the UN tries to discourage people from having big families. Subtle propaganda is used in Rescue Mission to persuade children to have the same views on family size as the United Nations does. I will now quote from page 35 and include some of my own comments. Quote, People in third world countries do not have big families because they are careless or ignorant. This is implying that having a big family is careless and ignorant. Children are their hope, their only security, because they don't have any control over their fertility. They end up with too many children. This implies that the United Nations knows how many children is too many children, a concept that is subtly propagated again on page 40. What they need is information and the means to control the size of their families. In other words, population programs, end quote. The UN then makes it clear that these population programs are more than just birth control, abortion, and condoms. Population programs mean to the UN control over all aspects of society. Quote, careful. This is more than just distributing contraception. It's about the whole economic and social situation. The smallest families happen in the most secure societies where there is peace, economic, and political security and education systems. End quote. An observant reader of this quote may take note that the goal of the United Nations seems not to want to create a free world where individual liberty is treasured, but a secure society where there can be peace through political security. Sacrificing liberty for security is an unwise proposition. Security is not always a good thing. Maximum security can mean a prison cell. It is important to understand what is meant when the United Nations says they want to create a secure and peaceful society through political security. 
Political security means no major unplanned changes to a political system. The only way to ensure political security is to remove your democratic form of government where politicians have to at least pretend they are listening to everyone's different opinions and replace it with an authoritative form of government where a group of non-elected leaders carry out a previously conceived plan that was formed non-democratically without the interruption of opinions from everyday people, much like the United Nations operates today. In the original Agenda 21 document, this same concept is propagated but using different dubious language. For example, the stated overall objective of Agenda 21 is to, quote, restructure the decision-making process, end quote. Not everyone will agree, of course, with the restructuring of the decision-making process. Therefore, the planners need to overcome confrontation to ensure political solidarity. To learn more about the apparent contempt that the authors of Agenda 21 have for local elected government, read my original analysis of the document that will be linked in the description. An interesting quote in terms of population control comes from Andrew Steer of the World Bank. Steer makes the connection that when put through primary schooling, girls will have less children. Therefore, Steer believes in achieving population control through schooling. Quote, if you take a thousand girls in Africa and give them one more year of primary education, they will have 500 less children. The link between education and family size has been proven time and time again. To educate a girl in Africa at the primary level costs about 35 US dollars per year, which is the best use of $35 anywhere in the world. End quote. I don't believe it to be a coincidence that the United Nations, in their Convention on the Rights of the Child, requires all governments of the world to, quote, make primary education compulsory and available free to all, end quote. The definition of compulsory is required by regulations or laws obligatory, meaning that every child will be forced to go to the free government schools and receive the UN propaganda. The Convention on the Rights of the Child is cited in Agenda 21 as well as in Rescue Mission. The United Nations views on population can be summed up with this non-ambiguous quote by Paul Simon that is actually used in the book Rescue Mission. Quote, the planet groans every time it registers another birth. End quote. Agenda 21 was drafted in the years between 1990 and 1993 when agents of various governments and NGOs met together in Brazil for the Conference on Environment and Development. The Deputy Secretary General of this conference was a man named Nitin Dessay. Desay is quoted in Rescue Mission as saying that one of the most important challenges in his opinion of the 21st century as being reducing population growth. Scattered throughout Rescue Mission are poems and drawings supposedly submitted by children throughout the world that help reinforce the overall message of each section. Many of these submissions are dark and gloomy exaggerations of the issues discussed in the book. For example... This picture here, attributed to a 14-year-old from Peru named Wendy Vilma Figueroa Sedon, is added on page 33 to complement the section on population. God is confused. The storks are crashing into each other not knowing what to do with all these babies. While the world is on fire, everything is smoky, traffic is always backed up, and everything is too crowded. This is the view of the world that the United Nations is trying to convey to your child. In the next section of this series, we will be discussing the lifestyle changes that the UN will be looking to force upon those in the first world. Thank you for watching, and remember to subscribe to the channel.